listen only mode. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Everybody out there in Clarion Live land. This is the Clarion Live open webinar. Today is Wednesday, the 8th of January, 2020. And with me today is yes. plain old Bruce Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> hello, John, and hello, everyone else. Hope everyone's having a good new year. Are you all hard at work, back at work? We're, we, we're in Cape Town, so we, we take a bit longer to get back to work, to be fair. The Joburg folk are all back at work, but Cape Town, we, we chill a little longer. So, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, things are going right. Things are going right. Good, good. Good morning. I thought I'd just pop in and say hi. Mr. For, Hansen. Oh, maybe 20 minutes or something. Okay. Um. What are we doing? Well, we don't have any questions at the moment, and oh, so, gosh. but I have a product uh. that we're trying to launch. It's, it's Greg's birthday. Let's everybody say happy birthday to Greg. Happy birthday to Greg. Say, say happy birthday. Happy birthday to Greg. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Greg. <laughs> I can't help it. I just need to break out in song. That's okay. It was. I, I should. If, if this was the forties or the fifties, you know, you'd have a big musical accompaniment and dance. <laughs> <you know, laughs> <musical> is, <laughs> is dead. Uh, wouldn't that be fun? I, I actually, um, as uh, a fellow I know in in Toronto, he's uh, he actually looks a little bit like you, Greg. Um, but he's a master bassoonist and, and plays many other instruments as well. But in, in bassoon, it just pure music, whatever thought comes into his head, it becomes music. Um, and I, I was joking with him one day how it would be great fun if I hired him to walk around behind me all day as I went about my day. And he <laughs> just played the music. soundtrack. He just played my soundtrack the whole darn day. So. <laughs> I'm going to get you, sucker. I think that was uh, one of the Oh, yeah, he had the soundtrack. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, also, in the um, Spider-Man movie, um, Nick Fury has soundtrack when he talked. Oh, really? Okay, cool. When he got interrupted, soundtrack went away. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it started. So, Greg is wanting this this new. Um, third-party product updating thing. Yeah, I'm curious about this here. Yeah, I was going to show a little bit of it today because, the, I mean, the, the Friday's the main presentation. I'm still working on it. I don't I don't know if it will be released Friday, but it will be talked about. Oh, I know. I know. Right. What? It won't be. <laughs> yeah. Resolve. This is always good. <laughs> Confident resolve. Yeah, it it's just not going to work. No. I've saying. done these things. I've done these things before. Yeah. Yes, they're not that easy. Amazingly enough, not that easy. launching a product is not easy. No, no, it's not. It's not I easy. know, John, you're a shill for soft velocity, showing people that you you can't get things done when you say you want you're, you intend to get it done, right? <laughs> well, I said I would try. I didn't say I, would, <laughs> I didn't give you an absolute. I said I'll do my best. And I have. I've done. Uh, I put a lot of time into it. And I've done my best. But then there's all these little things. You know, once it's done, once you say, okay, I can release this now, then you got to do the website and you know, there's licensing. Yeah. There's this and there's like all these other things that have to be done as well. Yeah, even for accessories, it takes about, well, it depends on the accessory, but it, it for a small accessory, it can take longer to build all of that than to, to build oh, the yeah. actual Absolutely. code. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. By some distance. Um, yeah. And you got to price so, it, and you got to figure out what this word that, that doesn't take that long for me, but, but between <laughs> this documentation, <laughs> the split pages, the build system, there's a yeah. lot of a lot of places it's got to be pushed into the system. So yeah. a lot of stuff to be touched. Takes takes a couple of days just to get a new product. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it onto the screen here in just a second. Um, I want to get some feedback on the interface. 
because, and I actually have, I started on one interface and then I changed it yesterday, like late <laughs> yesterday to a whole different thing, but I can show both of them on the screen and I know which one I prefer, but it'd be interesting to see what other people think as well. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, all right, so this is what it looks like at the moment. Cool. It's pretty. It is pretty. It's, um, right now it's four programs. They're all up here at the top. Are we allowed to make comments? You are, and I, I, I do want comments. But let me show it first, and then you can make comments. That's okay. Right. Okay. This is the original interface here, which was a tree. And it's not gone, it's just set aside. Um, and I started, well, a couple things here, okay. So mainly you wanna know when you need to update something, right? I mean, I think that's the primary purpose of this thing. And I, and I felt maybe I was getting away from that a little bit as far as what it, what it will do, what it will display, what it will show. Um, because this this here was showing me all the things I wanted to see. I could see the vendors and I could see all this kind of stuff, but I could not easily see what needed to be updated. I originally had um, this screen was over here and it was called installs. And it would update as it as you needed to install things. It would only show you things that needed to be installed. And you get notices up here when something's being downloaded, so you know that it's available. So if you happen to have the program running, you'll get a notice up here about it. Um, I'm also gonna have notifications if you want, that'll pop up at the bottom of your screen, just like Skype does, that kind of stuff. That's pretty easy to do, I haven't done the, the work on that yet. But as I looked at this screen, this screen was really telling me all the things I needed to know. And the thing about this screen is that I can know things in different ways. So if I wanna know what I need to install, I can take the status and I can drag it here. And now things are grouped by if I have an update available or if they're current. So I know all the things I need to install. I've got a Clarion 11 and a Clarion 10. So I know I have to install both because you can't install for every version of Clarion with one install. You gotta run them twice, right? So the idea here then is if I ran this, then this would go out of this list, it would go down to the bottom and this would refresh and I could just keep going down and down until they're all done. So that can, would be pretty cool. Go ahead. Can you can you filter on a particular current install as well? So yes. I've got like I've got like ten Clarins installed, right? Mm -hmm. So there'll be like five different versions of Claren ten or eleven. Okay. And the one will have network ten in it, one will have network eleven, one will have whatever, PDF tools or whatever. Yes. But to a large extent, those things are, I would never, so so like I have a, a Clarin install for a particular product that we make. Mm. Yeah. I would never update that install until I'm working on that product and I say, okay, now I'm gonna update everything for this product. Um, so in my normal day-to-day -day thing, I don't wanna see that because that's, my normal day-to-day -day is one of the installs. So that's why I would kind of, Group it, drag drag the Clarion install up to the top there, like what you did. That was very cool. Wow, this is like hectic, right? Um, mm. Can we do install first and then status within the install? Okay, so what are we looking at? Clarion installs Clarion ten, status update available. Right. So now I can see. Okay, that's my Excellent. main install. Although. Now, how do, does it recognize all the different versions you've got installed within each of your Clarion yes. environments? So, okay. Yeah, this this will show you what you've got installed here. And this is what's current. So th this obviously needs to be updated. <laughs> so, so these I, don't, I have, think he, don't have... I think he meant different Clarion versions. Yeah, like within Clarion 11, I can install a bunch of different versions, right? Right. So, okay. So here's your Clarion manager here. I'll bring it over here. And that's exactly what you can do. So we've we've predefined what clarions there are, right? Okay. That's, you know, that's the main thing here. And then you can add things under here. So if I went in here, I could insert um, 
Uh, so it doesn't automatically is. scan my Clarion settings and see it does. what does it? Okay. It goes the registry, and this, this this was the automatic scan here. Okay. These. Yeah, but I'll have like five installs for Clarion 11. Yeah, it's not going to find all those. At least I don't I'm know sure. how to do it. I looked yeah, at the yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you one. can't. Yeah. yeah. And I would, I actually wouldn't want you to scan because there's a bunch I wouldn't right. necessarily want to. And how do you determine what the current version is for all these different products? Because every product is, uses a different way of marking what their version is. That's the magic, Mike. Well, That's yeah, I understand it, but at some point you need to be you need to be working with all the third party guys to say how do you not, not determine all of them. what your thing is. Well, Just the good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of them are good. <laughs> um, anyway, I'd set my local path here, so I could, you know, find. So to answer your question, Mike, the the yeah. available version for for our stuff comes from an API that I made for John, so he can query the API and it'll tell him. Okay. Um, it's also in our RSS feed, but he was, you know him, he's all API friendly, so yeah. API. Um, and then for the currently installed version, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm guessing we've, we're very consistent with where our version numbers are, so I'm sure he's just reading them out. And you know what you I'm could do? You, can, you could create an interface to do that, and, and then you could just, uh, each third party installer could just provide a DLL that uses with an object that uses that interface, and, uh, and you could just plug them all in. Yeah, except that, I mean, not speaking on John's behalf, I, or as a consumer, I wouldn't like that because no, I wouldn't oh, want. I understand. I'm just saying the third party guys who could give this this thing to John, and then John would be able to know how to scan all the different products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the point. He's got to work yeah. with the third parties to say yeah. how to do it. But I wouldn't yes. want to deal out. I mean, they could give him code, but no, I would want to have. Yeah. But, but I'm saying code could just use standard interface, and he could just kind of have it populate yeah, them all. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's here are my thoughts. Is, yeah. Let's see. I've got you know. You look over here. You got the. There you are, Mike. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. I I saw that I I existed. I, I will we'll see. Uh, these these aren't your products. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that doesn't look like my product. Uh, <laughs> I've got twelve it's products, and sort of that thing. ain't them. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No. I did have it sorting, but th these are new. I just added these in yesterday. Yeah. It, I think it's. I think it sorts down under here. I don't even know if you have any products in here yet. Yeah, they're still not your products. Oh. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we're, work, we're like I said, we're still working on this thing. I have lots of products uh, that aren't mine everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> as far as as far as vendors go, a couple of you guys have APIs. I know Andy's working. I'm going to open up Andy's mic because he's got some suggestions as well. I think I'm going to open it up. Yeah. Okay. He's open. Hey, Andy. Hi. How we doing? Good. Good. Yeah, I, th I thought you should be here because this is all Niantis stuff that we're we're looking at. We're Kojak slash Niantis, right? Yeah, I, I, I love that little uh, on the report tree's ability to to group uh, results uh, that way. It's just kind of neat. Mm -hmm. neat yeah. my, my suggestion on that, which we kind of put onto all of ours uh, by default now, is um, let the user. Via, via check or check control or something, let them uh, turn on and off the inline filter. Because then, I think Bruce was saying, can we filter that to just Clarion 10 or can we filter that? And the, the thing is, the user then can filter it to whatever they want to filter it. You're really putting the power over to them rather than you controlling what they, they see. Rather than grouping and navigating, well, just they can still filter. group. They yeah, can yeah. still group, but like you know, I think they give it more well, targeted. Yeah, a lot of information there, and they might just want to know. Okay, I'm, I only really want to maybe have a look at. Uh, I want to upgrade string theory, or I want to upgrade. Uh, I, I don't know, a n other. Um, mm -hmm. Then they can basically, if they've got the inline filter, then they can just drop it in, and you don't do any work for it. You just tick a box. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was going to actually look into that. So that way, if you only wanted to see this install, you could, there'd be a filter here and you would only see this on the screen, all the other ones would disappear, that kind of thing. Yeah, we, we put the inline, uh, the option um, for the inline onto all of our report controls. Uh, if the users never use it, well, fine. They've not lost anything, but at least they have the ability to. Okay, so you have it so they can turn it on or off. And then it says yeah, there's a window button. control for it. You just drop the checkbox onto the window, associate it with the report control, and okay. that's it. Oh, okay. 
that's what I mean. From, from your work wise, you can add it in a few seconds, and then yeah, the user I'd, I'd add it to your window, clone it onto the command bar, and uh, and that's it. You'll be done. Cool. All right, so give that a go. But there you go, Mike. There's your stuff right there. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I recognize all those things. <laughs> it's because I went to your website. <laughs> uh, That's my vendor as... info. It's not my products, but hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, let me click here as a price. Um, um, vendors. vendors. All right. So what we've got is we've got a um, NetTalk web server. And I was going to have it so vendors could log in and enter information up there. So if they didn't have an API, we could just maintain it themselves you know, on the using the browser, that kind of thing. Like, Mike, I don't know if you're going to have an API. You may or may not. I may very well do that. But if you don't and you have a version come out, you could just hop up, log in, and then update it, and then everybody would get notices that your product was updated. So, so the um, yeah, the, of course, it would be much easier to just create an API than to update it every single time and make a change. Oh, yeah. You have, you have to update. It depends how many stuff. changes you make. I mean, you know. Yeah, and and I've got it batched out to do right now. So whenever I make a change, it just uploads everything to my website, okay. uploads the uploads all the HTML files, mm -hmm. touches things all over the place, uploads Mitten's site, gets updated, everything else. It's all automated. So, well, see, I can also give you an API into the um, the server here too. Cool. So you Let can, me do that. You can update directly into my. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to move all my stuff from one server to another, and when I do that, I'm probably going to have a NetTalk web server doing stuff there. So I'm sure I could add an API so that you could uh, get it directly from my site. So, so easy, yes. Right. Can we, can we talk about um, the the command bar? Yeah, we can. And I'm I'm glad Andy's here because he might have to answer you. Um, so you've got a shaded toolbar thing going on, which is very, dare I say it, XP. Um, I don't like, you don't like the shaded stuff. I know this about you. Well, you it's not that I don't. It's that that's that's an old thing, the three year shading and all that kind of thing. That's old. So you don't want the thing to look old out the box. I think so, you're using Office 2010 theme there. Looks like it. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so only, only a 10. Including in the name, it is 2010. It is. Yeah, I'm going to say, Andy, I'm going to say, I, you know, the, you know the, it, it looks old because that's right. He's picked a 10 year old theme. So, what theme should he use, Andy? Uh, personally, at the moment, I'm using the Office 2016 theme. And you've then got all the different styles within that. Um, Word, Word colorful, Word, Word gray, and Excel, Word, Excel colorful, Excel gray, and all all the stuff. I think we go with um, Word colorful, but that is very can be accused of being a little bland. I'll be honest with you, because it's this this white background with the blue highlights, and Excel has the green highlights, and I think uh, is it oh, OneNote has the orange, or is that access one of them? Too? It should look flat white. That's the yeah. Well, the, the things at the top are actually, if you use a ribbon, which John's using, then you're actually signing up to the uh, Office 27 uh, license agreement. Uh, so you have to be uh, guided by um, basically the old rules and regs because that's the, the interface you're using. Uh, you can, that said, you can deviate. You can crack open one of the styles and create your own, and then that way you're not truly using the Office 2016 or the Office 2010, and so on and so forth. But um, but yeah, I, I, I agree. That does look dated, so I would uh, definitely use uh, a. Can, can you update and compile, John, so we can see? I can, uh, which is a good idea because the time I try to do it, I end up with like black weirdness. So let's let's since everyone's here. Have you Let's copied it? Right. You know the golden rule, John. Have you copied in the styles from the code you're version you're using? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> probably not. So you can you can walk me through that too. Let's get to command bars. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I need to depart. I've got another meeting I've got to what? get to here. So I'm sorry. 
But right. uh, I just thought it was worthwhile saying hi for a bit, and we'll chat later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to hear from you, Mike. Okay. Bye, all. Thanks for coming. All right. So, what do you like? Well, I'll go Office 2016 and go with something like uh, you've got Word White. Just drop down the Word options. Yeah, Word Colorful. Try that. Now, it, it's a bit misleading. I mean, these are their names, not mine. But it's basically it's still flat white, but you just get the word, which is which is uh, like a, a very light blue. Highlights, so the highlighted option and things like that, if you had highlighted tabs. So I would go with that and just make sure the Office 2016 DLL from you're using 18.4 from that install is in your uh, folder. Okay, give me a minute to do that. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's compile and copy that over. Okay, Office 2016 DLL, huh? Yeah, they, they changed early 18, they changed um, the the actual theme files, which are nothing more than uh, markup language, XAML markup. Okay, eighteen point four, and then it's in bin. It's in the no uh, uh, samples oh. and styles. Samples, styles. Ah, there we go. Office twenty sixteen DLL. Just, just the DLL copies over, right? Just like just the DLL. Yeah, you don't need the source of it. Okay. What happened? You got a compiler. Oh, yeah, 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 I can take care of that. Copy here. Okay, I am good to go with the DLL. Yeah, what you looking for? Oh, just play it around. Oh, I just see now you're loading your report control. That's a bit old. Have you not learned anything on the Monday webinars? No, I really, I really don't. <laughs> Bruce, I despair of him. Um, Andy, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you should have given him some advice on the Mondays already. Hey, hey. Is this you, what for? <laughs> See, John's reason for being is the cautionary tale. <laughs> okay, it's coming. It's doing it. It's making it. You just long pause like I do here. Yes. Okay, good. Pretty sure I told it. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Well, that's what that looks like. Now, the only thing I would say with that is. Um, you can also see that your docking panes is now using 2010. So, oh, we have to change that too, right? Yeah, you know, if you're going to be consistent, and that there is something to be said about being consistent, to be fair, then. Uh, yep, I'm with you. Yeah. And of course, if you would, we... oh, well. <laughs> I'd allow the user to um, change their styles at runtime. So, just because you like 20, 2016 Word Colorful, another user might like uh, the dark theme, and so on and so forth. And it's just a just a single call so you, you put again you're putting the power over to the user only limited i mean nobody wants them to you know screw themselves up and put them tie themselves in knots but little theme settings we all got that in word and excel and outlook and so on so what do you think bruce i don't know do you like this blue at the top here or do you want it something a little more well i can you can you make the background of the toolbar go to white instead of gray Yeah, there'd be the, a different the style, right? Bar, the blue bar doesn't. That's because it's the word, you know, with the, so it's picking up the blue of word for that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe it's white. But, uh, yeah, try and get the background of the toolbar to be white. And if the top bar was white as well, that wouldn't hurt. Probably should load up the Doyantis demo because that lets you change them on the fly, right? Then pick one out. Yeah, but you, well, let's we'll, we'll try to do your app. Let's, uh, let's see if we come up with a happy medium on this one. But yes, you can see them. If you wanted, you'd have seen them in situ. 
I'm gonna try word white or publisher white. Any? Any? Yeah, word white. Word white. Might as well change docking ping while we're here. Yeah, you've got your style file already loaded in, so you don't have to worry about that. And the same with the property grid. Oh, you were there, Office 2016. Oh, I missed it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Word white. Okay. I was. I changed the name of the app, and then I all of a sudden the icons weren't showing up because it's like here. This is wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I missed this one. Here we go. It'd be nice, Andy, if you could, if this was just one setting and it applied to everything. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear you, John. Breaking up. You <laughs> <laughs> coming into a tunnel. <laughs> I said it would be nice. <laughs> Well, if you attend a Monday webinar, <laughs> <laughs> if I would learn something, right? <laughs> and apply what you learned there. And apply what I learned, right? So, it, yeah. So, what were you gonna? Were you gonna uh, want me to use groups and things? Is that what you want me to do with the loading of the report control? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it defines a group for you, so you're actually causing yourself more work and slowing it down by what you're doing. Uh, it's a it's a lose lose. <laughs> we don't want that. This thing we get we get into a certain way of doing it from the old days. And then we don't like these new ways. <laughs> But uh, there's, there's things to be said for the new ways. It's, it's, uh, it's there for you know, <laughs> speed enhancements and so on. <laughs> You've not changed your yeah. report control. That's, that's, still that's a lot better. That top thing oh, is a lot better. You did miss the report control. No, your report, report control still, uh, you didn't change it a second ago. I watched that. But also, you can tell because you've got the blue uh, right. drag area. Now, what? Now, this is the docking pane, and they've got blue tabs. Is that a, is that a different setting? No, your docking pane there, I can see, is. is or is that just normal? Look at that. Are they normal tabs? You're not using the sheet control, no? Oh, I see there's a problem there. Um, no, these are normal. These are um, the docking. These are docks. Okay. Well, can we can look at that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but if you just go back to your report control, yeah, that's still in Office 2010. Yeah, I do like that. I do like that uh, better. Looks cleaner. And I get, I get Bruce's point though, that uh, where you've got some disabled text. It, I don't know. It, it, there's something not quite right about it for me. Let's take a look at that. Okay, everything looks good. Yeah, you're not using uh, uh, out of the suite controls for those tabs. Um, we're using those for the tabs. For the docking, no, those are docking pink tabs. Okay, go back to go to your the main exe then, or where, where the the host for the uh, docking pane host. Okay, let's look at the uh, the actions of that. Just want to see your tab settings. Up 
paved. I can't remember where they are, Tabs. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you look again. So it's a 15 year old style you're using, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Better check. Uh, go with. Uh, you can't oh, have all the same things, though. Flat. What was flat near the top? There's also a default, which. Oh. Might I think be I might have more with... defaults, but uh, cause I can't remember them. Those, to be honest, or at least go off is 2013. I better check. Um, we're not covering all of the the options there. I bet there's newer. Yeah, because it doesn't have the same one I'm using. Right? Okay. While well, you're doing that, I'm going to take a quick look. Uh, it seems I might have missed some. I'll try that one. Du -du -du, tabs, then take docking pane. So, so, so interface-wise, do I need that tree anymore? I think I can do everything I want to on that one screen without having the tree. I agree with or, John. Well, yeah. it doesn't have it doesn't have the, it to have the tree there. I was thinking too. I can have them both there too. Yeah. It needs a little bit of work. I hadn't, I hadn't finished up all the other things on there, but. That's I could leave them both. I could just have one. I could give you the option <laughs> of having a tree or not. You could hide it if you didn't want it. I, as I was working with it, I found the tree less useful, I guess. It seemed to take a while to get down to what I wanted. Oh, so with the other one, I could just sort it pretty quickly. Here we go. It's pretty white now. It is. <laughs> I feel like we're losing some. Um, I, don't um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you can still see the tabs. I've still got a bar above the tabs. The one on the left doesn't have the bar above the tabs. That's the only thing that's missing. There. Why didn't the vendor's products one have that? It's oh, it's showing the active. Active. It's docking pane. Yeah. There's, sure there's a. Yeah. There's you a switch. Only one that I have to put in here. Yeah. So, so if you have that bar at the top, I think it makes the tabs easy to see. You've got to work on your icons a bit, but. Can you make that tab bigger? Is that a thing or is that? No, it'd be controlled by the style. Well, actually, I think it'd be controlled by the style. You'd have to edit the style for that. You could, because if it was a few pixels taller, it would probably look a little, yeah, or maybe make the font one, one size bigger. The font seems small. No, uh, the font might change it, yeah. But I like the toolbar now. That looks much better. Yes. I'm not sure if it needs an action center tab, given that there's any one tab. What are you what are you, what are you talking about? At the top? At the top the, left. Oh top here. Left you've got I see. Updated. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it does have a tab up there. And there's no other tabs. Obviously it does open the door to other tabs though. It does. But does it need them? I don't think so. There's not that much to do really. I mean their settings, there's going to be some settings and notifications and things you can set. I put the Clarion Manager up there, uh, this notification area. Yeah. So, like that big giant eye icon is the wrong size. It should be the same size as the other three icons. Exactly. Yeah, it's all wrong. That's easy because this is this this entire thing here is XAML. I have a lot of control over what goes through here. Okay, well make that sort of much more just take a tiny here. Yeah, yeah. Yep, can do. Let me go ahead and um, see if we have a font control in there. Uh, 
F1 control on for the tab. I think don't you have? Isn't there a font size or did I miss? Is there not? Uh, come under there. Uh, be, uh, come under the paint manager. Um, I don't know. There's no font size. No, it'd be for the overall control. So just looking here now, if I can see a font under the paint manager, docking paint. Talking pain manager. So you can change the font of the pain captions. Uh, so if that's a pain caption, it's if we can change it of the tab. There was a size and position tab. What are, what are we looking at now? Go back to panes and click on one. What's the tab? Uh, oh, you can put no. icons on the tabs, and this is mostly has to do yeah. with that. Yeah, just taking a look. There's um, for a pane, which is what we're looking at. So we've got a tooltip got whether to show the tab this is the actual tab paint manager yeah I've got a font setting but I don't know if it would affect all of the docking panes or just the uh, the caption of the the panes once they are tabbed because you've got a, a pane as a caption of its own in its own right and then when it becomes docked with others and they go into a tabbed uh, UI, then it also gets those settings as well. So you've actually got two sets of captions going on. So, I have to admit, out of the, the, I like the changes you've you've just done, um, barring the actual tab style, it doesn't really do it for me. I'll be honest. The tab style, so you like yeah. a, a different tab style in that one. Yeah, right. so which one? I don't know. It's a million dollar question, but that one doesn't really do it for me. And it does look a little small. If we could in, in, increase the uh, the font, it does look um, yeah a little on the small side by today's standards. But I think the report control also looks uh, the wrong font as well. Personally, it looks very small. Oh, hang on. That said, I've not got you maximized on my screen. <laughs> oh, oh no, it's better. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no. <laughs> Is that better now? <laughs> I'm looking at you in the little window, so uh, the, your screen was very small. Oh, no, that's actually okay. No, I'll take that. But I still don't like the tab style. I think... Um, you don't like the square. Yeah. That's only my personal... You know, I, I wouldn't do it like that. The rest of it, yeah, looks looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, I mean, one could definitely play with what options they are there and see what you, what you can do, hmm. what's available. But, I would still consider it you want to release it in its in its in its best guise if you will but the like we've chose office 2016 word uh, office 2016 white this is going to be your default i would put the power over to the user and maybe you, you have a second tab at the top of config or something oh you've got settings already there mm -hmm. but then again then settings why pop them up on the window when you can have them on a second tab oh um, like up here, you hit settings, and then they're all all across. The yeah, yeah. You, you don't need a screen there. You're not going off to another screen, and you've got them immediately. You can change your theme there. Uh, Just okay. an idea. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to get rid of that line above the currently chosen tab? Oh, where it has a little black up there. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the tab, the, that's the tab already... style I was on about. I wouldn't choose that tab style. I'd, I'd go back and change a different one, personally. Yeah, let's try I'm a different really one. But that's... Yeah, it's already bolded. Yeah. I always click the control and look over to the side to make sure the property grid changed. Because if it doesn't, you're in trouble. 
I very seldom go into the window and do the actions off it. I do the actions off uh, just off the no oh, off the, the, the main yeah. property that we own. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we, what were we at here? Tabs. Uh, yeah. Um, try something different. Which one? I've tried default because I I genuinely can't remember these. I think that's what we it was before. Was default. No, you was on no, you was on uh, one of the old oh, ones. Default. Old, 20, 2005. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, let's try default. On Friday, I'll. I'll Whoops! I'll take it from the from the beginning, from total scratch, and uh, <coughs> right. And you can see it's pretty. It's pretty. The the idea is that all the all the vendor information stays up in the in the web server, and then it just feeds down into your. I mean, it uses WebSockets, so you can get kind of live updates on it too. And that's pretty cool. But then this it's got a little program here that runs as a service and then it talks to your front end over here. But the service does all the downloading for you and stuff like that. And, and what happens if a hundred thousand Clarion programmers uh, hit it all at the same time? Not a problem. Because mm -hmm. it's it's really not sending that much out. And Bruce assures me that NetTalk can handle it. Mm. <laughs> No, I mean, A, there aren't 100,000 programmers, but, um, yeah, not but, that. B, <laughs> but B, you know. I really? Mean, it, yeah. <laughs> the, only, the only thing John should do is, is is randomize the time when it checks to some degree. So it anything that's check. automated. It doesn't check. It just, it just is WebSocket stuff. No, so at some point you go no. to the API to see what's there, right? Um, there are some times when I go to the API to get some information, but so, mostly when there's, it waits for there to be a change at the top and then it sends it down. Once it goes down, it says, hey, there's a change, and then you're right, then it hits the API. So you're saying you so don't click want... on that organizer tab. Well, do you have oh. anything on a timer? Do you have any API requests on a timer? Uh, no. Okay. Well, then it's not a problem. Click on the organizer tab now. Uh huh. Oh, you know, it's when, once you click on the organizer tab, oh, I wonder if that's a focus thing. Yeah, because over here it's not blue anymore until you get over here. Yeah, it's a focus thing. Okay. I like. Oh yeah, that's the active that. pane. Yeah. I think you can turn that off actually. Yeah, no, the highlighting I mean, that is. The highlighting. Yeah, I think you could turn off the whether to highlight the active pane. It's just a property. Oh, okay. So that both would appear uh, white with the uh, blue uh, uh, caption. Oh, I had a question for you, Andy. While you're here. So if I if I wanted this to be grouped like this just by default, can you set it up to do this, or do people? Yeah, have just to in the template. Over. No, 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 in the template, just say what your default uh, grouping is. And, and then it'll show, it show up at the top. Are you sure? Like so, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, cool. And the sorting as well. There's two separate tabs, one for sorting and one for grouping. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I think I never turned this on when I'd done the grouping before. So, I definitely no, have the sense. inline filter. Only because uh, I'm a big fan of it, that's all. <laughs> I'm biased, though. Although, in, in fairness, users are using it and they do like it. So, if anything has to be said, they're the end uh, judge for me. The, the inline filter? On your report control. That's your docking pane. Right. Yeah, no, so, I was going to look at the uh, highlighting first. Oh, uh, I don't know if it's on the template. I only saw it the other day. Oh, it's not. So, yeah, it'd be a... Show sure in bold, use clear type, show icons. Um, hot track. Is, it, is it this hot track? No, that's different. Isn't no, it? that's why it's tapped. In fact, you don't want the, you don't know, you just want more interface than anything. Go to the interface tab. 
Please say no. Sorry, pen. No, no. So I need to uh, put a new property. There's a property in the actual control itself, but it, you'd have to do it through set property at the moment. Okay. Well, let's not worry about it for now. Um, here. Oh, yeah, you go here. Are you, well, actually on this one, because we'll probably want to put a, a, a it on the window and let the user turn it on and off. If you just go to your window. Unless you Can want I it on have to go window. to the window? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to drop a control. So is that your report control? Yes. Okay. Have you got some screen real estate? Can we put them to the left? This is if yeah. you want the user yeah. to put it on. So go to your control templates. Oh no! These sorry, all... I just made it to the left of the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are all hidden. You, they, they're um, because I repurposed this screen, and I still want to keep these buttons around for a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, you don't have to move that title. It's just somewhere where we can put it on the screen, and the user can see it. That's all. Oops. I think he's saying that uh, title is a hidden thing, so it doesn't matter where yeah. he puts it. Everything over here, everything over here is hidden. So. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So uh, scroll up a little. You should have a report control inline filter. You've got an inline search, which is really a highlight. So if we're, we want the user to be able to see this. So yeah, wherever you want to put that. Um, change it to whatever wording you want and so on and so forth, but right click on its actions to associate it with the report control. I'm going to live dangerously, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's associated. Right, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, so just try, try that. I feel like we were going to do something else here. Uh, you were going to turn on the default grouping if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. I was going to do that. I'm going to live dangerously again. Bruce has a rule that once you drag something over from here, you're supposed to exit out, <laughs> then save it, come back in. You should do it without fail. How come the, uh, the control template is not resized on the left? Because it's an older version of C11. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, so you've got your grouping tab or your sorting tab. So if you want to, whatever your column is, if you can remember it. Uh, I wanted to do it by... Install and like status. Part. So yeah, let's try that. Oops. Okay, ascending by default. So that will be your default and you if you wanted to yeah, exactly. Like that. That would be your yeah, that would be it. And then I want to I wanted to sort I already have it sorted. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm staying on this version of eleven because um, if I compile C10, it forces it to recompile everything every time. And I didn't like that. Actually, while we're waiting for that to compile and a quick round, round table, we've got some apps. We're creating two commercial apps at the moment. Uh, work on plenty, but these are under our control. One's currently still in C10, whatever the last build of C10 was, and one's in C11. Um, we're, we're not really seeing you know, stability-wise, any 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 difference? Not really seen much difference between the two anyway. If you want the truth, uh, what's anyone using for commercially released software? I'm still using um, C10 mostly. This is C11. As you said, I don't <laughs> I don't see a lot of. I'm not seeing uh, much difference in the two. Uh, it's just. Do Why I the templates? Why are the templates? Yeah, I've still got to do that compatibility, actually. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I, 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 these narrow templates look terrible to me. I guess. <laughs> okay, so now um, I think you've just gone with the default, which is fine. So if you do display filter. Here, here's the thing, though. Like, if I drag this up, then it comes out of this column. But see, now it's still in the column. You hold down, hold down control and drag. But I'm just saying as a default. 
Like oh, this... when you drag it up, if you hold down control, then it uh, will leave it in both places. Right, but but we just set it to group, right? Which it did, but it left these things down here, and I'd rather that it displayed just like this. Oh, okay, I've got you. Uh, yeah, fair enough. But, I can. But it was uh... like this. But I'd like it to come in initially and look just like and that. look just like that, and not, right. and not have the columns displayed over here. That's uh, that's a, a bug in the uh, class. I go back to the vendor uh, on a Monday and tell them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I would if I if I would pay attention. <laughs> so. All right. So you want to click here. So yeah. So now you've got a filter row. Um, click on one of the columns. So. Product, product columns. Yeah, so click on uh, the actual fill. You see, you've got a filter roll white. I'd, I'd give them a thing of that, but oh, yeah. Okay. And click on whatever. Uh, well, yeah, message. And then you'll get to see. That's pretty cool. And actually, then you could, if this So was if you here. did have them in there, because I think it was Bruce asking before, how do I just see just C11s rather than right. message box and C11? If you got rid of the uh, the message box, you'd see everything just for C11 or everything just for. And you're putting a lot of power over to the user there. Yeah, like this. There we go. So there, now it's just all the C11s. Yep. The only thing I do, uh, because that row especially when there's nothing in it the user can think it's just a blank row within the list and they don't know it's like um you know, yeah. to be used as a filter so i put it as a parameter so they control the background color but i do color the row uh a different shade so that they know it's um it, it's, it's something to there to be used as well. yeah exactly mm, okay because otherwise, you look at your data. It's not grouped or anything. You look at your data, and you you just see a blank row, and it's just a bit misleading for them. I, I like the fact that you have the display filter there, and when you click on it, then it shows up. Oh, I know what that's for. Can they? I, I feel like they should. Well, I don't know. If it would just say all here with a drop down, they could see that would be nice. I don't, I don't know if you can do that. Like if they were all like. Oh, default the world. Oh, yeah. This. Yeah, but you could also, I don't know if you might want to put the drop down kind of moves into the other column, doesn't it? Uh, I'd like. So you couldn't show the arrow. Like subtle, I'd like a like subtle uh, hint, if you will. That'd be the ultimate for me. So yeah, you yeah. got the word all or something like that, but have it subtle. So as you type over it, you know, that kind of thing. Or it could say in light gray, it could say, click to filter or something well you control that wording because of course it's got to be multilingual so you you uh, you control that wording anyway just out of uh, interest though john what's throwing me there is the values have disappeared um can you just if you just drop down say the clarion install or, or any of them for that matter and you've only got the all if you close your app and go back in yeah where'd all the other ones go yeah because it was all there <laughs> it was are you reloading or, or anything? Because that doesn't reload. No. I turned it off and back on. That's, Ooh, that's what I did. I turned it off and I turned it back on. Okay, go to the, um, just quickly look at the template. There's a template setting to say whether to load all those unique values. Because of course, if it's a large data set, you won't want to put that time overhead on your on your data loading. Okay, I'll go on to your report control. This one? No, that's the inline filter. Just the report oh. control itself, one down. This usually isn't quite this slow loading up. Got to say, that's quite slow. And options, uh, inline controls. And then uh, automatically build is on. So, yeah. No, it had them because I saw the list of products. In fact, we chose message box. So I don't know why you lost it and then got it back again. Well, that's, uh, but check that because uh, there's no reason. Right again. 
let's see if uh, turning the filter off and back is what did it. Because that's the only thing I can think of that I did. Because it doesn't do any actual new okay. reloading. All it's doing is just checking, changing the visibility. All right, so there's everybody. There's it, yeah, cool. Go back to all. That turned it off. That turned it back on. Mm hmm. That was mm -hmm. just the one there. Quickly trying that while I'm in one. I need to report this to the vendor, I think. <laughs> I am going to try the webinars. We've done some plenty of uh, report controls. I'm just trying it while we, sp uh, while we speak. That's compiled with um, version, it's actually older than yours. Gents, top of the hour, I'm uh, going to head on home. So uh, I'll leave you to it. Okay. Thanks for the input because this is what I wanted to make sure we were I was on the right track anyway. Looks better than the blue, John, to be fair. It does. I have to agree. Like it. Right, catch you it tomorrow. Tomorrow, Net Talk webinar. Net Talk webinar, first thing. Right, Cheers, thanks please. for Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Uh, and that is, I've just tried it in the uh, in the sample app, and that is a bug. And that wasn't always the case. So I shall look at that here. I'll uh, note it down accordingly. Yeah, turning it off and turning it on is wiping the, uh, the list of valid options, and it shouldn't be doing. Well, there you go. God, I wish I'd attended now. <laughs> <laughs> See, Andy, I've got you all listed here. It's. I've, I'm looking at the actual. Oh, I'm going wrong sheet. You're there. I'm looking at the thing. You'll get it. You'll get it this week. <laughs> <laughs> you're just right here. That's not your stuff, though. No, 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 no. I'm with Mike. Last time I looked, they weren't my product. <laughs> Yeah, I know. The, all, everybody's product is showing up now. Yeah, still in process. Still in process. We'll see how far we get on Friday. It's it's uh, definitely close. And not that I'm a bit mixed on the other option, but you've got the display filter. You have got a display search, which doesn't filter the roles. It just highlights them with a particular color. I'm a bit mixed on it, to be fair. But again, we give it the option to the user. It's just off by default. Um, you know, for how long it took to add that, you could add that functionality. It really comes down to what you want to give to the user on that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, the filter really comes in handy uh, for obvious reasons. If you've got quite a lot. This um, is nice. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that. So when so when I when you group here when I pull it up here it's always goes off of here is that right? Not if you hold down control. So oh, you hold, hold down, down control. You hold down was... control. Yeah, if you hold down control and move up current. Ah, okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so because because that way I would still keep this. This for the filtering. Yeah, when it works again. Yeah. When, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the filter will still work. You still be able to type in Clary and Ten there, but the pre predefined list should still be populated. There's no reason why that's been wiped. Right, right. Is that a um? Is hmm. that's just clear, uh, standard Kojak? The way they, no, they, they do it. Kojak don't. No, they don't offer any of that functionality. That's our template. What does that? Ah, okay. Well, I wonder if. Um, but I is know there, what that is. Is there a way to turn it? Is there a way to turn it off? Well, I'm, no, I'm talking about the this part where I hold control down and move it up. Oh, is there a way to make um, it so it always stays? Because now I'm thinking with the filter, it'd be nice if it didn't move up. Let me look for you. Let me look. Open the report control. Because then I'm going to keep my filter here, and then I could it would be sorted, but I could filter on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh wow, that's, that's a really old version. That's neat. So now you like the way the default is when it first <laughs> comes up with the grouping. Yeah, now I know. Yeah, mostly because of this, of being able to just go and then pick your version. Okay, I'm just trying to find it in now. So with port control, there's going to be something about. Um,
Hmm. So what do you think, Greg? Like, what what uh, is this going to do it for you as far as keeping the clarion sorted and what's in each clarion? And it um, yeah, it looks prettier. I do like the fact that uh, I can have multiple versions of clarions because I do have multiple versions of clarion of uh, the same version on the machine. It looks like it's getting very close, John. It's getting very close. This has, um, have document storage too. I, I started using this, even though I'm just testing it, but I put people's health files in here. So I don't have to search for the health files anymore. You can find the uh, file on health. So you're you downloading also, the HTMLs from Capesoft and? Well, when, when you do the install, it's whatever is installed, you can drop here. So this, this is just to keep documents. You can keep notes on the templates here or your emails that you got. Drop them in here. There was um, I'll show, I'll show it on Friday. A discussion by Mike Gorman about uh, how to keep yeah. track of things. I saw that. That's that's one one reason I did the uh, document thing. Because he he does it for different templates. He was talking about a specific template mm -hmm. that he uses. So he could drop all those documents right in here, and that'd be pretty cool. What does check in file mean? Check in file. Oh, these these there's things a, up here. There's a button. I don't know. I have to. I have to uh, sort through this. This is. Uh, I think who does it? This is the document management from Pro. No, who is it? I should know the third party vendor, right? Pro Domus. By Charles, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Pro, Pro Domus. Is um, Not Bruce's Dolan, thing. So. Yeah, it's the guys who do image EX, and it's the same guy. Yeah. Ah, oh, Ch Ch uh, yeah, Charles, Charles, uh, Charles uh, That's it. Yeah, this is his. I dropped it in. Um, so I'm not sure what all these buttons do, actually. But it seemed like they were when I was playing with it. Uh, sometimes it would tell me something was checked out, and I had to check it back. So I, th I think that if you if you double click a file, it checks it out. And then when you're done with it, you have to check it back in so that if you made a change to it, it knows. I think that's what that how that works. So it could save it, save that document back in or something. See, that might work in a a corporate environment where there's multiple people using exactly. it. Here. Yeah. Yep. I just haven't had time to investigate yet and see that. You know what the best workflow is going to be. Most of you are just going to be looking at them. I don't think you're going to be editing stuff, but it is something you got to consider because if you, I mean, like a help file, obviously you're just going to look at it. You're not going to save it, so it doesn't need to be checked out. But if you had notes on it that you wanted to update the notes, you know, you'd look at it, edit it, then it has to be stored again. So it just depends on uh, how I store it. I think. Have to look back and see what I did because like you can store it in a in the database, and I might have done that to make it portable, so you could you could change folders or whatever, copy it, and you would still have all your documents. So I think I'm storing it in the SQLite database, and that's why you really need to check and check out. If you're just pointing to the, if you were just pointing to it, when you move to a new machine, it would all be gone. Right, exactly. So I think that's why I decided to store it in the database. So but yeah, I'll I'll have to you know switch it a little bit more. I just haven't had time to play with it. I just got it working so I could add stuff, and I was like, this is cool. And then I need to look up some help on VU file tools. I just clicked over here. Usually I have to search that out. So that's handy. You can also um, like when you get an email from uh, Capesoft that has all your registration and stuff in it, you can drag that over here and drop it, and it'll register for you. Well, it, that's the idea. <laughs> it won't do it exactly at the moment, but it, it will. 
It will do it exactly in the moment, just not this moment. The moment, not this moment, right. right. But I got the drag and drop part working, which is cool. Hmm. So anyway, Andy, what were you up to? You were doing something. Uh, sorry, John. Um, Wangle was just going. So um, I was looking for that property for you. And um, I'm sure that the property for it is so that when you drag them up, it automatically keeps them, you know, where they were, but I just can't find the right. actual property. But I'm sure I've seen it in the past when I'm going through, just struggling to find it now on uh, on demand, of course. Let me do some digging in the report control. That's... And if uh, I can find it, which okay. I should be able to, I'll put it as a property on the, uh, on the interface tab. All right, very cool. Okay, well, I think we can wrap up. That's... So you were entertaining enough uh, so that nobody had any questions. Nobody had any still, questions. <laughs> I was watching. still hung over from New Year. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. See, I never get invited to those parties where you're still hung over a week later. <laughs> I'll come to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Peter says dictionary error window on the Skype chat. What's that all about? Everybody's got Skype? What's the error? Report uh, error. Uh, was called. Was called. Error to Please report. report this. I've never seen that. Dictionary oh, access. Well, yeah, I've never seen that either. I'll bring it over here in case anybody has seen it. Has anybody seen this error? No, can't say I have to be fair. That, that is Sounds like a Prometheus gear. <laughs> Report error was called. Please report this error. But it's not even. It's not even error. There's nothing specific about that. Yeah, that's a a terrible error message in in, hmm. in more than one way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, Peter. It, it looks like an error that was meant to go be gone back to to flesh out and was forgotten. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe someone in Skype has seen it. I have never seen it. All right. Well, with that, I think we will call it a day. It's so, a day. Getting there for you, Greg. It's a day. Yeah, Friday I'll, I'll go into a lot more detail on how this all works and come together and this will be further along and we'll run through some demos on it and go from there. <laughs> right. Thank Thanks, you, John. Andy, for your help. Oh, no Happy problem. Birthday. Thanks, Greg. And uh, everybody have a great day. Don't forget, Net Talk is tomorrow. Um, 7 a.m. Clarion Live Time. And we're up on uh, Friday. All right, everybody take care. Thanks for coming. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye.